Hey students, uh, we're so glad to be here with you today. This is Josh and Aleska, and we're joined by Jim Karch. He's gonna introduce himself a little bit here. Hey guys, yeah, I've been uh, working with high school and junior high students for the last 10 years. Just blessed by you guys. Uh, love serving with the, the next generation. Yeah, Jim's so awesome. He's a deep well. You guys will probably see him around a lot, and you'll continue to see him throughout your student ministry experience. But uh, we just want to take a few moments today to talk about a really important topic. Um, I'm sure many of you have seen on the news or social media, through the grapevine, whatever it is. There's just a lot going on in our political world right now, a political spectrum. Uh, we have an inauguration coming up. Um, we just came off of the stuff happening in the Capitol. We had an election. We had just had so much stuff going on in 2020 and early 2021. And so we want to take a moment to talk about what is a Christ-like response to politics, to the transition of power, to when there's political um, unrest. What do we do as Christians when we have that? And so, Aleska, would you share a little bit about what this has been like for you during this season? Yeah, so um, my response is actually a little bit different than a lot of people. Um, I'm actually not on social media a lot. Um, yeah. Just uh, it's difficult for me sometimes to just see all the negativity and all of the arguments that come from people um, because I'm, I'm not just uh, part of the left or part of the right. Um, I, I'm, I'm with Christ. And so um, I, I've kind of chosen to not be super, super ingrained to that. And I just trust that if there are big enough things to go that are going on that um, somebody will tell me about them. And my position has been more one of just one of prayer and of wanting to just pray for our country um, when I hear things that happen and uh, just trust the Lord with that. Yeah, so I love Aleska's approach with this. I'm a little bit different. I'm active on social media and I watch the news and I have my own resources that I look at. So like I've been pretty uh, in tune with what's been going on or at least trying to, but like Aleska, like I don't have a political party. I don't have a leaning necessarily. Um, I think there's just this really important idea that we need to know that we, our allegiance is first to Christ. And so if you identify as right, right left, Republican, Democrat, or whatever, before you identify as someone that's in Christ, I think that's where you can see your political leanings going off a little bit here. And so I try to see everything, whether it's politics or something in the news, through the frame of Christ and how he would approach it. And if we're honest, the right, the left, whatever your political leaning is, doesn't always get it right. But if we can come from a biblical standpoint, that's where we go. And so I've actually had really cool opportunity over the past few weeks and months to have conversations with friends that don't know Jesus, but they've been asking me like, okay, you're a Christian. How are you responding to this? Like, how are you seeing this stuff? And so that's been really cool for me um, to be able to engage with that in that way. I don't know how much you keep up with the news, Jim, but yeah, it's it's interesting because I, I I used to follow the news more. What I actually found, my heart was impacted. Mm. I actually found my heart was I was I was more anxious. I was more mm -hmm. angry. I was more bitter, and and it was it's similar to my music selection. I, I find that what I intake. So it's all holistic, it's all the same, whether it's the media, whether it's what I watch on TV, whether it's what I listen to, just in, in, on podcasts, it affects my heart. And so I, I, I've really been intentional over this last decade to try to refine that. And, and the media and the news is one of those facets that I've tried to dial back. If you think of that as a dial for your attention, dial that back. So I, I think that's one of the takeaways. If you're feeling anxiety and anger right now, Maybe that's a sign and a time for you to be able to dial back your intake of that type of thing. Take an assessment of what you're listening to. Maybe that could be one of the things you take away from this. Yeah, that's so good. And something that you pointed out there is that like this stuff affects our hearts. It affects what we're doing. That's because everything we do is worship. Like when we talk about in our everyday worship series right now, whether it's like we think about prayer, we think about reading the Bible, we think about musical worship, but every act, everything we do is worship and all of that affects our hearts, it affects who we're becoming. So media consumption, politics, that's all forms of worship. <laughs> and we might be worshiping the wrong thing sometimes, but we gotta reframe our minds. We have to be focusing on Christ. And we're actually gonna be talking a little bit about Romans 13 tonight, or today, and uh, Russ is gonna go a little bit about that. But before that, I wanna give us a little bit of a reminder that if you're confused right now, if you're scared right now, if you're just seeing all this stuff and this is the first time you've maybe really engaged in politics before, I just want to give you the encouragement, or I don't know if this is encouragement really, but this stuff has been happening since the dawn of time. Ever since humans have uh, sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, we have been power hungry, we've been corrupt, we have been sinful. And so you can look in your history books, you can, I mean, you can probably think of different countries right now that maybe have messed up big time and done some pretty terrible things. 
Um, you can look at our own U.S. history. You can look in the Bible and see countries that have fallen. Israel has fallen, and no one, no one is abstain, no one is removed from this idea of corruption within power. And so, uh, when we look at politics in our day right now, we shouldn't be surprised that stuff like this happens, especially when we're not following after God, when we're living in a country that isn't Christian. You know, we're not like America isn't Christian. We're, we have Christians within it, but. We're not a Christian nation, and even then, we're still going to fall short. And so, um, but Eleska, would you just share a little bit what Scripture has to say about that? Yeah. So we know that it's really important that we view everything through the lens of God's word because we know that it is truth. Um, and as Josh said, civilizations have been rising and falling for all of time. Um, and one of the things that has been really impactful for me when I first um, learned about this is in Romans chapter 13, verse one, it says, everyone must submit to the governing authorities for all authority comes from God. And those in positions of authority have been placed there by God, which I know is like a super, super crazy idea that like even the people that we don't agree with that God has placed them there, um, but, God uses everything and has purposed everything for our good. Um, we can read that in other places in scripture too, but um, just as you're, as you're thinking about what's going on, whether or not you agree with what happened with the election, our president-elect has been placed there by God. And so we can trust him, we can trust the Lord um, that he knows what he's doing because he is ultimately in control. Mm. You know what I love about that scripture in, in, in Romans 13? If you look at 12 before it and you look at after it in 13, what I love that Paul does is he sandwiches that. It's not, it's not a standalone scripture. Context is king when you're reading scripture. You have to, what is, what is Paul's intent? So in Romans 12, he starts to transition to how do we live out our faith? And he starts with love. And he starts talking about how love, love, love. If you read the beginning of twelve, um, love must be some love must be sincere. Honor one another above yourselves. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. And and then even after you get done with this, submit to authority. Then he continues to talk. Then going back to love. So it's not like all of a sudden the uh, submission to authority is out of context. It was in the context of love. So. So let me let me share a practice with you guys. This is something that this is something that could work uh, and really be applicable for you from school. Um, whatever's going on in your home, uh, whatever's going on with your friend group, uh, whatever is going on in your world, um, you're not alone. Um, if you look back through Scripture, it, there's this word "with" is a powerful word. Um, the scriptures say that the Lord was with Abraham, the Lord is with Isaac, the Lord is with Jacob, the Lord is with David. Most importantly, the Bible says the Lord is with Jesus. And so what I'd like to ask you to do this week, this is a takeaway, this is a tangible thing I'm asking you to do. Take your journal, take a piece of paper, take something. Write out the things that are causing you stress, anything that's causing you anxiety. Maybe it is the election, maybe it is the inauguration, maybe it is the, the, the persecution of some of our uh, brothers and sisters of color, whatever that is that is causing that anxiety in your world. I want you to write it out. You're gonna notice your, 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 your tension. You might, you might be tight, your, your pulse might increase. And then I want you to think about what the Bible says, that you're not alone. Um, you're intended to do this life with God. Uh, so I want you to systematically then take each one of those things that you have and then right beside it, do this tangibly, physically. Take that action and then do it with God. Each one of them right with God and then visualize, take the time to visualize in your head. And what would it look like the night of inauguration, no matter what happens, no matter what upheaval happens, whether nothing or something happens, I'm doing this with God, I'm not alone. If you write that out, the intention is, we are supposed to be non-anxious presence. We're always supposed to be people that have the fruits of the Spirit. If we do things with God, we're gonna notice more that we are people that are not anxious persons. I don't know if that vibes at all. Yeah, and Jim, that just makes me think a lot of Matthew 11. And this is something we've talked about before and as you guys have probably heard about before, but Matthew 11, 28 through 30, come to me all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest as Jesus. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. You will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy, 
my burden is light. And I mean, I look at the response on both political sides of the spectrum, and it looks like a lot of people who are heavy, who are weary, who are carrying heavy burdens and just don't know what to do with it. And so sometimes the responses don't come out super well. Um, doesn't mean the issues aren't important, but that doesn't mean that our reactions may be just showing where our heart is. And Jesus is really clear here that if we submit to him, if we're following him, if we give ourselves to him, he's going to give us a yoke. This, it's this like tool that they use like cattle and it would just kind of, it's almost like a, it's like a neck brace almost to keep them kind of in line. But he's just saying that if you are so in tune with him, that he will give you this, this barrier, this thing to hold him close to you that is light. That is supposed to make you go through life and just um, abundantly know who he is and to be gentle and lowly in heart. Like what does that mean for us to be gentle and with the way we react in love towards people and to be kind? And so to just become people like that. And so I don't know what that looks for you right now, but if you are having that, like if you feel that anxiety, if you feel like you're holding on to the burdens of this world, maybe just turn to Matthew 11 a little bit today, 28 through 30, and see how can I take that yoke upon me? How can I have this life where my, the burden is light and the yoke is easier for Jesus? Come on. Yeah. And I would say one other thing that has always been helpful for me is uh, taking time to spend with the Lord and just talking to Him about what's on my heart. So if you would join us right now, I'm just going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for our country. Uh, and I hope that this time has been encouraging for you. So, uh, dear Lord, I just thank you uh, that you are in control. That no matter what happens in our country, no matter what happens with the politics, Father, that you are in control. Uh, God, for all of the students and for us too, um, would you just teach us how to love like you? Would you teach us uh, how to respond in kindness and in grace? Um, Father, if we have enemies that are around, Father, would we pray for them? Uh, would we lift them up to you? Father, uh, I pray for our country for the unrest that we've seen in this past year and for what we might see in the future. God, we don't know, um, but you do. You know all things. So um, would you just be with the people who are in the Capitol, those who are in government? Um, God, would you bless them? And uh, would you draw them to yourself um, into relationship with you? Um, and God, would you accomplish what you desire? God, we just love you so much. And uh, we pray all this in Jesus' name. Well, hey guys, thanks for joining us. Uh, we hope this was encouraging for you. Um, please keep following us. If you haven't, click subscribe and you'll be able to see all of the other awesome videos we'll be putting out. And we would love to see you in person here at ECU Christian Church on Sunday mornings at 11. Hope to see you soon.